So welcome to our advanced QGIS workshop. This course covers QGIS for automation and advanced visualization. A brief about Spatial Thoughts. I'm building Spatial Thoughts as a modern learning platform for open source technologies. I've been building this for over four years now. We love QGIS along with other open source technologies. One of the key differentiators is that we publish all our materials freely and openly for anybody to use and learn. And many of you would have learned from our materials. And again, we want to make this as accessible as possible. We also run classes where we teach this courses live. And we also issue a certificate. We are work closely with QGIS organization. We are a certified training provider, one of the few handful of organizations in the world who are authorized to give official certificates. And if you take this class live, you'll get that certificate as well. We are also QGIS a sustaining member. So we financially support a part of our revenue course to support QGIS project and the development. My background is traditional GIS and reports and background. I learned GIS on ARC Info and Map Info. That was my world. That's where I did my master's work. And then I joined Google in my early days. I joined right when they acquired a company called Keyhole. I was part of the Keyhole company and then joined Google. So this was before Google Maps, before Google Earth. And I saw the whole journey and the, the world of mapping shift from desktop-based software to online tools like Google Maps. One of my big achievements at Google was to migrate all our internal users from proprietary software to QGIS. And I'll tell you the story of how that happened as we started building the Maps team and started having a large operation. Having commercial software posed a lot of restrictions, both in terms of cost as well as how we wanted to use it. And QGIS served the need perfectly. And I've been working with QGIS ever since. I also did a lot of work with Earth Engine. I left Google in 2020 to teach full-time and I've been running this company and teaching ever since. I want to tell you brief about my QGIS journey. QGIS has been, has been around for a long time. This is a screenshot of, of a tweet by Gary Sherman. He's the founder of QGIS and he tweeted about you know his, the first version that was released of QGIS in 2002. QGIS was initially developed as a viewer for the PostGIS database. So PostGIS database had a spatial extension called PostGIS where you can load some spatial data, but there was no way to see the result. So Gary Sherman kind of developed this small piece of software to view the data that was in PostGIS. And it has grown to be a larger project where we have hundreds of contributors, millions of users throughout the world who use QGIS. I first encountered QGIS in 2006 at that time, I was trying to set up mapping operations for Google Maps, and we were trying to you know, data, get data, edit data, visualize data for publishing to Google Maps. And as the team started growing, we were using commercial proprietary software. And as the team started growing, the cost of acquiring licenses for all of those users became prohibitive. Also, the what we wanted to do is we wanted to do a lot of automation, and it was very you know restrictive in how we could use the commercial software. So that's where I first encountered QGIS. I said, can we use this software? It seems pretty nice. It was still very early version, but it could do visualized data. It could do basic analysis. So I started exploring QGIS and started transitioning our mapping team to QGIS. And I could I was amazed that you could do most of the things out of the box. It was simply nobody had explored that. And as I started exploring, I started blogging about it. I developed some training materials for my team. I asked my boss, can I put it online so that others can also use this? And you know, I got approval and I started blogging about QGIS and those became very popular. Those were the kind of tutorials that initially gave birth to this QGISTutorials.com site, which is now kind of a go-to resource. We have 50 plus tutorials here and we constantly maintain this used by millions of people, translated by many people, used as labs in universities to teach people as well as used by learners to learn QGIS. I started exploring QGIS more deeply by developing plugins and learning about customizations. In 2019, I wanted to kind of develop courses and teach QGIS. So I became a QGIS.org certified training provider. Till that point of time, I developed tutorials, which are kind of how to use QGIS for solving spatial analysis problem. I started hearing our demand for people to say, hey, I'm a urban planner. Can you tell me how can I solve my urban planning problems using QGIS or how I want to create this hydrological analysis. How do I do this in QGIS? So I collaborated with some urban planners and hydrologists to develop some materials. I have linked those from the slide here. So you can kind of go and explore those as well. My current interest of uh, last couple of years has been to use QGIS for doing large scale data processing for remote sensing and earth observation data. There's been a big shift in the world of remote sensing where 
Now, instead of downloading and processing data locally, you can have data hosted in cloud and you can kind of stream data to your client like QGIS. And that allows QGIS to be able to work with large data, which was not very possible before. So if you have struggled to do remote sensing with QGIS or any of the desktop based software, this new approach is kind of changing the way how you do. And this is something that I'm actively working on it. And it's a really exciting time for people that now you can use these technologies to work with really large data set. And it's the kind of transition that we saw from like DVDs to Netflix. So instead of kind of downloading and having the data on your computer, you can just say, I have the data somewhere on the cloud and I can use clients like QGIS to stream the data that I need and work with that. The course is divided into four modules. We'll start by learning about the thing called Processing Toolbox, which is an integrated place where all of the analytical tools in QGIS live. And learning about Processing Toolbox will allow you to automate your workflows and chain those commands together to build a model. So we'll start learning about what the Processing Toolbox can do and how you can solve all your analytical workflows using Processing Toolbox. We'll also learn about batch processing, where you can say, I have to run this tool on you no know, 100 files. How can I set this up so I can just set it up once and it runs automatically on 100 files. Then once we have learned about the processing toolbox and the algorithms that are available, we'll say how to connect them into a workflow. So instead of me running those 20 tools one after the other, I can chain them together and run all of those 20 tools in a single click of a button. And that allows to automate a lot of the workflows. We'll also learn how to kind of structure your workflow and your project so that you can work with large data sets and you can also do data, reproduce your workflows more reliably. Then we'll switch gears to learn about visualizations. We'll ask you to collect some GPS data from your part of the world and we'll see how to animate that. So QGIS has built in support for time now. So along with X, Y, and Z, QGIS can work with temporal coordinates. So you'll see if you have temporal data like GPS tracks, how do you visualize that? We'll also learn about 3D animations. QGIS has now very robust support for 3D data. You can visualize you know, elevation data as well as point clouds. Natively in QGIS, we'll see how to do a you know, fly-through animation in QGIS. The last module is about expressions. Expressions are one of the core pieces of technology that QGIS enables throughout the software. Learning about this will help you be more productive and do solve problems which are otherwise not possible. So we'll cover expressions throughout the course, but in the module four, we'll learn about some advanced expressions, which allow you to solve really complex problems with just a few lines of expressions. And then we'll cover some, uh, some plugins that will help you solve specific problems in your domain.